Pay close attention to these images. What you're seeing now is a real test. of the British Raven Air Defense System, but this isn't just any test in some controlled training field. This is happening on Ukrainian territory during the war. And the target that the British system is tracking is a Russian KH-101 cruise missile, one of the most advanced weapon systems that Russia has. Watch what happens next. Intercepted, destroyed in real combat conditions. But the Raven is only the start. Because while the world debates whether the United Kingdom still matters militarily, something extraordinary is happening behind the scenes. The United Kingdom is quietly arming itself, massively, and with technologies that seem straight out of the United Kingdom arming itself, technologies straight out of. Let's start with a weapon that may very well be the most revolutionary you'll see in the coming years. It's called Dragonfire. Imagine a British warship in the middle of the ocean. Suddenly, swarms of enemy drones appear on the horizon, dozens of them, maybe hundreds. In the traditional defense model, each drone needs to be shot down with a missile, and each missile costs about $130,000. Do the math, 10 drones. $1,300,000. Without drones, your ship runs out of ammunition before destroying half of them, your ship. Now imagine the same swarm of drones, but instead of missiles, the ship fires light, light concentrated at the speed of light. Each drone is instantly disintegrated, and the cost is just a little over a dollar per shot. One dollar. The Dragonfire doesn't need physical ammunition, it doesn't generate debris, it's silent, it's invisible, and its accuracy is surgical. It can hit a coin from a kilometer away. Originally, this system was scheduled for 2032, but it was accelerated and is now confirmed for installation on British destroyers by 2027. In less than two years, the math of naval warfare has just been rewritten. But lasers are only half of the equation. Because you can have the best weapon in the world, but if you can't detect the enemy fast enough, you lose. And this is where it comes in. Asgard is not a weapon, it's a network. An artificial intelligence network that connects everything. Drones, satellites, ground sensors, soldiers, tanks, everything in real time. In May 2025, the United Kingdom tested a prototype in Estonia during a NATO exercise. The result changed everything. Normally, when you detect an enemy target, there's a process. You confirm the target, you request authorization, you coordinate the attack. This process can take hours, but with Asgard, it takes minutes. It works like this. Drones patrol automatically, they detect an enemy vehicle, the artificial intelligence identifies the type of vehicle, calculates where it's going, determines the threat level, and automatically chooses the best weapon to destroy it. A British soldier sitting miles away receives the information, confirms it, the system fires, target destroyed. It's the same tactic Russia uses in Ukraine, recon and attack. But now the United Kingdom dominates, and differently. Asgard was designed to be 10 times faster, 10 times more lethal, and one of the weapons that connects to Asgard. It's something particularly impressive. The DAR-250, a jet-powered kamikaze drone that can fly 250 kilometers, find its target and destroy it. Even in environments where a global positioning system doesn't work, even under heavy electronic interference, Russia has learned to block global positioning system signals in Ukraine. But the DART-250 doesn't rely on global positioning system. It uses inertial navigation and visual recognition powered by artificial intelligence. You can cut off all satellite signals. The drone still finds the target, still completes the mission. And in the air, there's something even more impressive being developed. A sixth-generation fighter jet called Tempest. 
a partnership between the United Kingdom, Italy, and Japan. A functional prototype of the Tempest is being built now to test the technology and is expected to make its first flight in September 2027 at 12 p.m. But what makes the Tempest revolutionary isn't its speed, it's not its stealth capability, it's the cockpit, or rather what's inside the pilot's head. The traditional control panel disappears, and in its place there's an augmented reality helmet. But this helmet does something that no other system in the world does. It monitors the pilot's brain activity in real time. If the pilot becomes unconscious, suffers cognitive overload or panics, the artificial intelligence detects it and autonomously takes control. It can safely land the aircraft or continue the mission. It's like having a co-pilot who reads your mind, who knows when you're about to pass out before you do, and who can take over instantly. This isn't science fiction. The hardware is being built now and testing starts in two years. And underwater, the United Kingdom is building something that guarantees its survival in any scenario. The Dreadnought-class submarines, four nuclear ballistic missile submarines, all already under construction. These submarines carry the British nuclear deterrent. There is always at least one at sea. There is always at least one missing somewhere in the deep ocean, invisible, undetectable, with the capability to respond to any nuclear attack. Against the United Kingdom, it is the ultimate guarantee the message to any adversary that attacking the United Kingdom means self-destruction. And with the new Rolls-Royce pressurized water reactor, three reactors, these submarines are even quieter, even harder to track, even more lethal. Now, you might be wondering why, why all this massive investment in military technology? Why now? The answer has four names. Russia, China, Iran, North Korea. The United Kingdom calls this the deadly quartet. Four countries that are increasingly coordinated, that share technology, that support each other, and that represent a threat that simply didn't exist 10 years ago. The Russian invasion of Ukraine was not just an isolated event, it was a warning, a warning that the era of peace is over. That high-intensity conventional wars between states are not history, they are the present and potentially the future. The threat comes not only from Eastern Europe but also the Arctic. Russia is expanding its military presence in the north, with bases, ships, submarines and the United Kingdom has responded by establishing a permanent base for the Royal Marines in Norway, Camp Viking. It's a constant presence on NATO's northern border, it's not just symbolic, it's practical. Thousands of British soldiers train there in Arctic conditions, learning to fight in extreme cold, learning to operate in an environment that could become the next battlefield between NATO and Russia. Trying to prepare for the Norway exercise. The United Kingdom recognized something key. They can't compete in numbers, can't recruit enough soldiers to match Russia, can't build tanks on the scale of China, so they need to compete in another way. Technology innovation speed. The bet is simple. If you can't get more soldiers, make them more lethal. If you can't get more ships, make them more efficient. If you can't have more missiles, you need to have lasers that cost a dollar. It's a risky bet, because if the technology fails, the lack of numbers becomes fatal, but it's also a necessary bet. Because the United Kingdom has no other choice, and that's why systems like the Raven... Come on! ...are being tested in Ukraine. Because Ukraine is not just a battlefield, it's a laboratory, the biggest war laboratory of the 21st century. Every intercepted Russian missile, every drone shot down, every tactic tested generates data, data that is analyzed, failures that are corrected, successes that are replicated. When you see those images of Raven taking down a KH-101, you're not just seeing a test, you're seeing validation. 
validation that the technological gamble works. That $1 lasers can defeat. $1 lasers can defeat $130,000 missiles. That AI can cut reaction times from hours to minutes. That a smaller army can be 10 times more lethal. The United Kingdom is preparing for something it hopes will never happen, but if it does, it will be ready. Sometime. With lasers, artificial intelligence, kamikaze drones, nuclear submarines, and systems that are transforming how wars are fought, it's no longer about the United Kingdom's military relevance, but whether its adversaries are ready for what's next. And you, what do you think? Can advanced technology really make up for smaller numbers in a modern war? Leave your opinion in the comments. If this video surprised you, share it with someone who needs to see this. And subscribe to the channel for more analysis about what's happening in the military world. See you in the next video.